the M1. Abrams has been the greatest main combat tank for decades. It's been updated multiple times with new technologies and design. It's getting its biggest overhaul yet, along with a faster production schedule. The updated M1E3 Abrams may be seen sooner than predicted. Let's examine this historic machine and what its development reveals about warfare's and battle tanks' future role on battlefields. The U.S. Army issued a comprehensive market study to American business in early September to advance its next-generation main battle tank. The Program Executive Office for Ground Combat Systems requested specific industrial capacity information through the Federal System for Award Management Portal to Mass produce the future Abrams. Companies with track ground combat vehicle manufacturing experience were surveyed. Although not a contract award, it is the Army's first major move towards Abrams M1E3 industrial capacity. The M1E3 program has been under development for some time. The M1E3 debuted two years ago. The U.S. Army proposed to build an M1A2 SE PV Abrams upgrade. It declared on September 6, 2023 that it had canceled the M1A2 SE PV4 variant and would instead invest in the M1E3 Abrams tank. In 2019, the Army Science Board released an independent assessment of the 2040 battlefield and its implications for the fifth-generation combat vehicle. 5GCV reportedly shaped senior Army leadership. The research suggested a $2.9 billion, seven- or eight-year program to produce an upgraded fifth-generation combat vehicle, a hybrid electric motor, auto-loading, new main gun, maneuvering, hypersonic, and gun-launched munitions, anti-tank guided missiles, integrated armor protection, and improved command control and networking are needed. Future tanks should have AI and robotic vehicle pairing capabilities. Major General Glenn Dean, Ground Combat Systems Program Executive Officer, emphasized masking potential to lower vehicle thermal and electromagnetic signals. The M1A2 SEPV4 development was stopped because the Abrams tank cannot grow without adding weight and must lower its logistical footprint. The Ukraine war taught us the value of integrated protection systems and flexible architectures that can adapt to new threats. After starting development in March 2017, the Army said the M1A3 would have the best features of the M1A2, SEPV4, and comply with the latest modular open systems architecture standards allowing faster technology upgrades and fewer resources. This will help the Army and commercial partners create a lighter, more durable tank that is more effective on the battlefield and easier to update. The M1E3's battlefield debut came in spring 2024. After that announcement, the Army contracted General Dynamics Land Systems GDLS, to shape M1E3 specifications and commence basic design. GDLS, original Abrams equipment maker, unveiled Abrams X technology demonstrator in October 2022, a car that introduced key M1E3 design elements. These include a hybrid electric propulsion system that might cut fuel use in half, an unmanned Taro with an auto reload to reduce crew number from four to three, increased armor and onboard AI for threat prioritization and integration with UAS. The Abrams X's drone communications and 10-ton weight reduction prove these innovations' technological viability. They'll join M1E3 on May 1st. The U.S. Army announced its desire to field the M1E3 Abrams tank, seemingly accelerating Abrams' modernization. The new tank is planned to finish operation in 24 to 30 months, ahead of 2030. This acceleration shows the Army's strategy move to acquisition to overcome bureaucratic delays and antiquated risk management techniques. This policy adjustment aims to rapidly equip armored formations with a light, more survivable and technologically sophisticated main battle tank to combat evolving threats. After General Randy George became Army Chief of Staff, he was given a 65-month production timetable. George ordered the program team to decrease the timeline by two-thirds. Dr. Alex Miller, the Army's chief technology officer, said George's decision was based on the realization that the current acquisition process, which could take over a decade from program initiation to delivery, was no longer suitable for technological or battlefield change. On the Ukrainian battlefields, Innovations and counter-innovations might happen in days, making it hard to disagree. Bureaucracy can prevent armies from getting the combat capabilities they require. The first signed-off Abrams tank deployments to Ukraine took eight months to arrive. 
Demonstrating the bureaucracy of U.S. military procurement, Miller criticized traditional acquisition culture for trying to manage all risk to the point of no risk, advocating instead for accepting responsible risk, removing bureaucratic hurdles and using all legally and ethically available tools to accelerate development. GDLS emphasizes quick selection and deployment of new capabilities like powertrain improvements, integrated active protection systems, and PS, reconfigurable software hardware frameworks, AI-based targeting, and advanced interior ergonomics. Autoloader development, a unique challenge, is being prioritized to enable crew reduction and unmanned TUR setup. The Army is revising its PS approach trying to integrate technologies into the vehicle rather than using bolt-on kits. The Army's experience with the Israeli award system likely informed their views. Trophy was integrated into several Abrams models, but not fully, causing operational trade-off. M1A3 avoids such concessions. As proof of the Army's new simplified development approach, GDLS and its industry partners have been urged to make more flexible internal decisions. Miller stated that letting industry Lego together components based on technological expertise, speeds iteration, supply chain stability, and agile development. Program managers and designers can now take hardware risks sooner to accelerate product delivery under this new acquisition philosophy. To ensure the first units are operationally sound and safe upon delivery, the Army involves testers, users, and engineers from the start. Even with this new, faster process and the years of development already spent building out many of the new Abrams features, that schedule of first deliveries in less than three years seems excessive. The Army is certain it can deliver the M1E3 on time within its five-year budget cycle. This confidence stems from the program's designated funding line, which allows it to proceed even under continuing resolution that bans new programs. Given fiscal constraints and modernization push, budgetary stability is vital. The Army will produce the M1A2 SEPV3 at a lower rate until M1E3 production ramps up. That should guarantee industry continuity and allow the Army to stockpile the latest battle tanks to stay ready. Got SEPV-3 production started in fiscal year 2018, received a $4.6 billion contract in 2020, and should finish in June 2028. SEPV-3 improved power generation protection and networking. This limits its ability to adapt to future combat demands like anti-drone defense and tight integration with U.S. battlefield intelligence and firing systems. M1E3 meets the bill perfectly. Its development will match the XM-30 Mechanized Infantry Combat Vehicle, Pro another major Army modernization project. It's also built to work with advanced complementing programs. Meanwhile, the Army is rising. The Armored Multi-Purpose Vehicle, AEMPV, will replace the M113. The AEMPV entered service in 2023, with five specialized variants to serve Armor Brigade combat units. Another notable example is the upcoming Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle update. The Bradley Hybrid Electric Vehicle, BHEV, and related hybrid electric endeavors improve Bradley's strength and interoperability. It supports the Army's 2050 climate policy to electrify all combat vehicles using hybrid systems as a transition. The hybrid-engined M1E3 is a showpiece of this U.S. Armored Force modernization project. But the M1 Abrams has always been the key to the U.S.'s ability to field the world's most advanced and formidable army. So, it would be surprising if the next version of this renowned tank didn't push technology. Abrams originated in 1963 when the U.S. Army and West German military Vere began working on a new main combat tank designed to improve NATO interoperability, like the M1E3. The MBT-70 in the U.S. and the KF Panzer 70 in Germany used several new unconventional technologies. Four conventional tanks with the driver in the MBT-70 hull existed at the time. The loader crew member will be replaced with a mechanical auto loader, while the driver and other two crew members will be in a nuclear, biological, and chemical or MBC protected turret. Also featured was hydro pneumatic suspension which improved cross-country ride quality and let the driver lift or lower the tank. These are typical in current tanks, but were clever initially. MBT-70 development was halted in 1970. After years of conflicts over missile kinds, gun types, drafting measurement systems, and the tank's massive weight. Due to rising expenses, delays, and conflicts, 
work was suspended by mutual consent. Congress canceled the U.S.'s upgraded MBT-70 in December 1971. Congress did let the Army use the remaining funds to construct a new main battle tank and granted $20 million for a new tank program adjusted for inflation, which is about $150 million today. In contrast, upgrading 29 M1A2 tanks to SEPV-3 cost $650 million. Military equipment expenses have skyrocketed in recent decades, highlighting the dollar's purchasing strength. Been debased, however, a lengthy process including multiple prototypes, intensive bargaining between Chrysler and GM, and more design and armaments back and forth than a pendulum followed. A ceremony at Lima Army Tank Plant in Ohio introduced the first two XM-1 Abrams tanks in February 1980. During development, the prototype was dubbed XM-1 after General Creighton Williams Abrams. Junior, Abrams was a renowned World War II tank commander and U.S. Army Chief of Staff from 1972 to 1974. His leadership and ideas for contemporary armored warfare helped the M1 tank project succeed. After World War II, the Army planned to name the tank. General George C. Marshall was preempted by Army Secretary Howard Bo Calloway, who had divulged the Abrams name years before. Fittingly, the widow of General Abrams traditionally christened the first tank by smashing champagne over its barrel. By 1985, M1 manufacturing had stabilized after some setbacks. Between 1984 and 1986, 894 IPM1s, short for Improved Performance or Protection, were built. The M1A1 update occurred in 1985, with 4,974 built in various variants between 1985 and 1993. Pressurized NBC system, rear bustle rack for supplies and crew items, modified blow-off panels and M2-560120 mm smooth bore gun were added to the updated variant. At least 10 versions have been made, including the M1A1SAUKR, the official U.S. designation for the variants delivered to Ukraine through the Foreign Military Sales Program, a thermal sight for the 50 carbon machine gun, forward-looking infrared and distance target find sensors, and tank infantry phone communications gear like the FBCB2, and Blue Force tracking, improved crew situational awareness on the Ukrainian Abrams. In 1991, the M1 Abrams received its next baseline upgrade, the M1A2. The tank commander, second generation depleted uranium armor, an independent thermal sight, and the ability to shoot at two targets simultaneously are available in these variants. The baseline model was upgraded three times. First, the M1A2 SEP, System Enhancement Package, and SEPV 2 and 3. Current production includes tailored variants for Taiwan and Romania, and Q8 prototypes of the SEPV-3 began appearing in 2015, so they're filled with modern technology. This includes the M829, a four-kinetic energy anti-tank round that boosts tank lethality against modern threats, including sophisticated explosive reactive armor, and the M1147 AMP round, which has various functions, including point. Airburst and detonate delay modes are examples. The U.S. Army and other forces worldwide want them. Indeed, the U.S. has a rising SEPV-3 production backlog of 1,500 orders. Polish authorities intend to get 83 tanks each year under a 250-vehicle contract inked in April 2022. At the Lima facility in Ohio, the U.S. Army can make 35 M1A2 SEPV-3s each month at a regular rate of 12 per month and one shift at 40 hours per week. However, the Army has only been producing 109 tanks a year, or nine a month recently. That's well below peak production decades ago. Records indicate that the US military produced 8,800 M1 Abrams tanks in various variants from 1979 to 1993. Over eight times the current production, that average is 840 vehicles per year, or 75 per month. In the case of a major confrontation with Russia or China, the U.S. will struggle to restore production to early 1990s levels. That's for the SEPV-3's established production line, not the M1E3. 
Russia shows that ramping up production of older models is difficult. Today, Russia can build 200 to 300 T90M per IE, but it took at least two years to reach that level. A decade after manufacturing was announced, the fabled next-generation T14 Armata still has many semi-functional prototypes. Thus, the U.S. Army's industrial study this month is crucial. By finding reliable line replacement modules, electronic boxes, display assemblies, and power distribution components, the Army is preemptively smoothing production, which will speed up and lower expenses. Companies are also asked about their experience integrating communications gear, battle command systems, predictive maintenance technology, and fire control systems. These ducts must be organized in clean rows for effective production scaling. The Abrams M1E3 program upgrades America's heavy armor fleet's protection, mobility, and digital technologies while streamlining logistics and lowering sustainment costs. The Army says the tank balances fighting power and long-term survival. Combining innovative technologies into a platform that can survive in contested conditions till 2040, the older Ukrainian Abrams have outperformed their Russian counterparts, but they're vulnerable to ultra-modern battlefield threats. FPV drones, loitering, ammunition, hypersonic missiles, 6,000-pound guided glide bombs, etc. Ukraine withdrew its remaining Abrams from the front lines in mid-2024 to preserve them, just as Russia reduced the use of its depleted tank stocks in 2025. The M1A3 is said to have fearsome new weaponry like maneuvering, hypersonic grounds, and gun-launched anti-tank guided missiles. Its armor is stronger to combat drones, guided bombs, and advanced anti-tank weapons. AI-assisted targeting and situational awareness, reduced thermal and electromagnetic signatures for survivability, and robotic wingman vehicles will help eliminate these current dangers. Due to its modular design, it may be easily modified to tackle emerging threats like directed energy weapons or to prepare for large-scale wars against near peers, ensuring it has modern weapons and strong local production to win these wars. Being timely is key. The M1E3 checks all the right boxes, and this new action by the U.S. Army shows that it is taking the necessary steps to ensure that this latest Abrams dominates the battlefield for decades to come. Our coverage of the arms business and the world's most critical battlefields will continue. Please subscribe to never miss out, and thanks for watching.